Hello. <coughs> How are you? It's a grey and misty day today. Very spring-like. Can you see the white thorn on the right all coming out? There's white thorn and black thorn. And the only way you know which is which is this time of year, because the white thorn comes out with white flowers. I know the black thorn doesn't come out with black flowers. I know what you're thinking. Whee! We're behind the cauliflower tractor. Let's put my uh, let's put my window in. We'll be turning left in a minute. So how are you anyway? Everything going well? It's another lovely day in paradise. It's a Friday, I think I'm only working Friday morning. I had the day off yesterday. Do you know I've noticed something, that when you're working, the phone rings off the wall. If you're not working, if you've got the day off, then you might get one phone call all day. It's almost like the collective consciousness knows that you're not open, you're doing admin. So. My lovely receptionist came in. She's uh, training to be a nurse. My nurse has got a couple of weeks off. So the receptionist is doing nursing. And uh, so we're keeping it simple, but you know, we're not keeping it that simple. I think we've got a molar root filling coming in today, um, which is basically like three incisor root fillings, isn't it? And uh, I think uh, she's even putting an implant in, in uh, next week. But she's doing really well. And then what happens is that after we've done the treatment, she clears up and sterilizes while I answer the phones. So all in all, you know, it works pretty well. I've worked single-handedly before. It is possible to work with one assistant who's the, both uh, assistant in the surgery and reception, and works on reception. But um, there he goes. So it's worth poodling along behind him for a little bit. Or is he just pulling over? Ah, oh, he's indicating left and turning right. What a weird thing. <sighs> but um, when you get busy, you know, when you get to the point where you're busy, uh, you need a receptionist, a nurse, and a and a part-time hygienist, probably. Which is what we are, we're busy. We're constantly getting people ring up and ask if we can do this or we can do that. And it's not small work either. I mean, you get, occasionally you get people in with toothache and asking if you can sort their toothache out. Usually children, uh, but uh, For the most part, if the adults ring up, it's because they uh, they want a bridge or an implant or something, you know. Something catastrophic's happened to their teeth. Had an interesting case in the last few days. Uh, she started started off unusual because um, she rang up and asked if we were taking on any new, uh, private patients, which is odd because uh, you know they say, "Oh, are you taking on any new NHS patients?" is the usual question. But oh, taking on any new private patients? Yes, we are. Uh, oh, right. In that case, so where are you? We'll come in and we'll make an appointment. And I said, "Well, 
you know, the days of just dropping into a dental surgery to make an appointment are, are gone. I said, we'll send you a text. In the text is a link, click on the link, pop your details in, we'll make you an appointment. Well, if it's all the same to you, we'd rather um, come in and, and just have a chat. Now, the problem with this approach is, while it's very nice to appear very friendly and say, yes, by all means, come in, I'll take you on a tour of the steriliser, etc., etc., you know that if someone comes in, they're going to be an absolute minimum of half an hour explaining to you what their problem is. And having already told them that you can't do them a checkup on the spot, then uh, they're going to be asking you all sorts of questions about their treatment and uh, how much it's going to cost, you know, how much is this going to cost, how much is a denture option going to cost, how much is an implant option going to cost, and, and you can't give them any of these things. And the, it's the funny thing about these questions is that they ask them two or three times. So, for example, you say, well, um, you know, I need a crown. How much is a crown going to cost? Well, it depends on the on what type of crown, you know. Okay, yes, well, uh, it fits over the top of the tooth. How much will one of those cost? <laughs> yeah. So, I can't tell you without seeing you. And it doesn't get any less annoying whether this conversation is over the phone or over or face to face. So it was one of those conversations and uh, you know peppered with a ton of other stuff like oh how long have you worked here how was this surgery how did it come about where did you qualify blah 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 you know um, turns out this woman had had a Barney with her existing private dentist who she'd been with for about 12 years and who had done a, an all-on-four upper full but had had problems with the implants uh, dropping out. Um, you know, almost certainly because they had ignored the first rule of implants, which is that you don't do them on anyone who needs them. In other words, if someone can't brush their teeth properly and lose all their teeth, then you shouldn't do implants on them because they won't brush their implants properly and they'll lose all their implants. With someone who brushes their implants properly and can have implants will also be brushing their teeth properly therefore they won't need implants right okay <laughs> so I'm talking to the author of catch 22 here so uh, Anyway, we had this half hour conversation which led to them making an appointment to come in for a checkup and wanted to know exactly how much the checkup was and what it included. And then I said, I need to rather than x ray you twice, it'd be nice if we could get the x rays off your previous dentist. And uh, they were in agreement with that. And, uh, you know, so we put in a, I asked her if she could. Because under the subject access request, data protection, she's entitled to her medical records from this dentist, which includes her notes and her x-rays and everything. And all she has to do is ask for it, and if it's the first request, then it's free of charge. But then, she then rang me back and said that the dentist had requested that uh, we request the records that they couldn't release them unless we requested them, which is not true. Um, in the old days, if you wanted the records from a previous patient, you would write to the dentist and say, look, can you send me the records? And the dentist would then, if they could, would send you the records. Bearing in mind, in those days, uh, the records were all paper-based, and so it was very much more difficult to send a cardboard sleeve than it was to, you know, especially seeing as you needed to retain the cardboard sleeve yourself. So, I thought, okay, I'll give this last dentist a ring because there was, there was some funny thing going on about, you know, I've had implants. Well, have you still got implants? Well, I don't, I think, I think they've fallen out. I think 
think they've fallen out. Okay. And uh, have you got a list of your tablets? No. You know, so there's a lot of gaps in this. So I rang the dentist anyway, cut a long story short, and you know, this dentist did the usual. I've got the I've got Mrs. Hanso here. You know, she's come to me from you, which is you know, like it's not a boasting thing. It's just like we don't we don't ring up to say, oh, you know, you've fucked it up. You've 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 lost a patient there and they've decided that we're better than you in terms of who they'd like to see. Let's get some warm air on my feet. But um No, because uh, quite often uh, <clears throat> the dentist is quite keen to see the back of that patient, you see. And so what they can do is they can have a good old laugh because they can say, oh, Missy so-and-so, who used to drive us nuts. You know, you never guess who she's, uh, who's landed up with her. So there was, a lot of, um, there was a lot of suppressed giggling at the other end, which was, I think, was the deciding factor. But the patient, but, you know... The dentist said, oh, well, she's a, she's a lovely lady, you know, she's lovely and you think, oh, God. But, you know, she's some, from time to time she's been a management problem, but I wouldn't want you to, uh, I wouldn't want you to, you know, let anybody know you heard that from me. So I'm like, no, I just, I just need to know if there's anything that I need to know that's not on the notes. So, so she said, no. Anyway, we got the nose through in the x-rays. The, uh, the notes show uh, the 57 pages of notes, A4, right? Most of which was every single bit of treatment she's had done over the last 10 years. But a few of the pages were the dentist notes. So if you subtract the half of those, which are the pro forma, this patient appeared healthy, I am healthy, blah, blah, blah. It boils down, she's had some implants, She's had some problems with implants, the health of them, although uh, t- at least two or three of them are still there. And uh, she had this crown break off at gum level. She uh, insisted, even though they offered her a crown prep appointment the next day, uh, she insisted on having this crown stuck back on, although she doesn't know how long it's gonna last. And then. Um, in the meantime, she said all the fees shot up. Although I can't see any evidence that the fees shot up, all I can see is the evidence that uh, she was charged 30 quid to put this crown back on, which when she said she was going elsewhere, they refunded. So, you know, she's walked out of there in a high dudgeon, uh, confident that, you know, she could interview a few other private dentists for the privilege of treating her mouth and uh, unfortunately <laughs> got the same car as me but I'll give him a wave but I don't think he understood why so Anyway, from a clinical point of view, right, it's very clear to me that this is a, a complex, multidisciplinary restorative case because it involves implants, failing implants, implants placed by someone else, um, prosthetics, and, and, and complex restorative because she's only got, as far as I can see, four teeth left, lower 2112. Uh, and the crown of which is broken and she was quoted a price and has already said that's too expensive Can, could she get a discount um, and, and probably broke because it was overloaded and has been quoted for a crown on this snap route without uh, but just merely by extending the, the prep down to the gum which has uh, established a new low tide mark on the tooth, so giving enough length, they, the previous practice said, 
to do uh, a, lot, a, a ground without doing a, a root filling or a post or anything, which I think is, is probably necessary as a belt and braces approach to this one, one of <laughs> four lower incisors that are basically doing all her chewing. So I wrote, uh, I wrote to her letter and said, I'm sorry, this is a, you know, we're a single-handed practice and this is a complex, multidisciplinary, advanced, restorative case. And uh, gave her the names and phone numbers of about five local multi-surgery uh, practices that uh, would be in the market for dealing with this sort of thing. I've got I've got the sort of incomes concomitant with uh, preserving their mental health during these sort of cases. So she gets two emails, having said that they're not that uh, literate in terms of IT, which I think may have been another reason why they came in and wanted to have a chat, although not not at all the main reason I don't think. But uh, anyway, of course, they get the cancellation for the appointment first and then ring me up to ask why it's been cancelled. Um, having rung me up several times to ask me why it was taking so long and if she could come in earlier, then uh, she would. Which is a habit I see from her notes that she got into with her old practice also. Uh, you know, ringing them up and asking if she could be seen sooner. Um, she could be jumped up the waiting list. And also some some uh, mention of uh, dementia in the previous notes, which was something that certainly wasn't mentioned to us in, uh, in our medical history that we did at the time when we clocked her in. Um, and I said to her, "Look, there's another, there's another email there explaining, uh, explaining everything." Now, bearing in mind this is six o'clock in the evening, you know, I'm in the middle of the, my tea, and, um, and she's like, "Oh, can you wait? Can you wait on the phone until I find this other uh, email?" And I, like, after waiting for about a minute, I said, "Look, as soon as it is six o'clock in the evening, do you mind awfully looking for it without keeping me hanging on the phone?" And she was like, "Oh, okay, then, okay, then." And I said, "Look, if you wanna, if you wanna get in touch, get in touch tomorrow." So I don't know about having dodged a bullet there. I think we dodged a bloody howitzer shell. But it's always regretful, you know. You always. I'm always sorry that I can't take someone on, and I'm always. I, get, I always get this feeling that I probably could have done it, you know. I probably could have taken her on and I could have achieved something that the previous dentists have not achieved. Now, in other words, uh, get her to look after her implants or uh, convince her that she needed a post crown or something. Uh, but um, you have to be very careful about that because it's... Um, every dentist has this, you know. This is the the, the emotion that uh, when a patient comes to you from another dentist and says, "Look, can you have a quick look at this root treatment that I've just had done? What do you think of it?" It's the emotion that leads you to say, "Oh, yeah, they've done a bad job. I could have done a much better job than that." You know, the root treatment's uh, touching your sinus and all that crap, which. Um, you know, it just doesn't get anyone anywhere. Uh, except, they, uh, except you know, gets the patient perhaps a payout. Or it's the, it's the hubris that leads you to say, if someone's had a root treatment done and it's not, say, fully filled or it's, you know, there's no radio opaque filler, doesn't go to the tip. Well, look what the apparent tip, the radiological tip, and there's some areas, uh, evidence of bone loss um, it leads you to say, um, yeah, well, we could probably redo that and, and see if we can't improve upon that a bit, you know. Well, uh, and then running into the same problems that the previous dentist ran into, like the patient's got a high gag, 
perhaps they can't tolerate a rubber dam, perhaps they can't, uh, uh, they've got a small mouth, you know, they limited opening, perhaps they can only open their mouth for 10 minutes and then they start to shake or want to rinse out or get, develop a nervous cough or something or there's some internal um, bifurcation that stops the instrument going down or uh, some ledging or something inside that the previous dentist created and then and then couldn't get past. So that emotion you have to you have to just abolish that emotion. You just have to just be humble and say uh, you know I can't there's no there's no easy win here for me, you know. And it has to be an easy win, you know. You don't want to be doing stuff all your life that's where you're on the bleeding edge of success or failure. Uh, you know, just stick to, stay well within your competency. And your competency will expand as you get more experience, but, uh, you know, don't try and expand your caseload faster than your competency expands. So I dare say she'll be ringing up first thing this morning, wanting to know if I'll reconsider. That's it, that's what we need. We need you to turn right. And that stops the traffic coming across the roundabout. So, I've got to, so I've got two members of staff in hospital at the moment. One having a minor up and one with a broken leg. So, my natural buffer of resistance to disaster is severely compromised. Um, that is what you need, you know, you need at all times to have more cars than you need on a day-to-day -day basis, more money than you need on a day-to-day -day basis, more uh, staff than you need on a day-to-day -day basis, more equipment than you need on a day-to-day, -day, more materials than you need on a day-to-day -day basis, <clears throat> more firewood than you need on a day-to-day -day basis, more uh, petrol in your car and diesel with diesel in jerry cans than you need on a day-to-day -day basis. More income than you need on a day-to-day -day basis. That advice courtesy of Mr. McCorber. And you need to arrive earlier than you need to on a day-to-day -day basis. So that people don't nick your parking spots. Not that we have any parking spots here, but they're mowing the hedge uh, today. So, oh dear, up you get. Is he all right? Yeah, he's all right. Yeah, here they are. The cones are out. So, we few, we lucky few, are going to get the good parking spots. Ha 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 ha! Early bird, blah blah blah. Right, okay. Hope that's been of some help. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.